Welcome to The Drive Podcast. I'm your host, Peter Atia. If you like this video, please let me know by subscribing to the channel or visiting my website to become a member for more exclusive content. And then, as you said, with Alzheimer's disease, the genes play a much bigger role, but they're not deterministic at all. So that's an important part of testing. The other thing that we know plays an enormous role in Alzheimer's disease is the metabolic health. So boy, this sounds like a broken record, but it turns out metabolic health really matters. It is the common thread that links all of these chronic diseases. And that's why it is the fourth horseman, even though on mortality tables, it doesn't really show up individually as a huge source of death. There's also a huge vascular component to Alzheimer's disease. Again, we've talked about that in great detail with Francesco Gonzalez Lima way back when on the podcast. So we'll link to that as well. This is almost like a greatest hits episode, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, this is great. <laughs> Keep Travis busy. I'm plugging the podcast here. So there's other components. I mean, I think there's an enormous inflammatory component to Alzheimer's disease, and there's almost assuredly a component that revolves around toxins and other things like that. Worth also pointing out, about 1% of cases of Alzheimer's disease do seem to be genetically predetermined. So there are three genes, PSEN1, PSEN2, and APP, that make up about 1% of cases of Alzheimer's disease. And those do tend to be deterministic. Fortunately, they're obviously very rare, but nevertheless, that's important to know. It generally isn't something that shows up for the first time when you do a blood test on somebody. Usually their family history is so clear based on the early age and severity of dementia, that it's usually a test you do to confirm your suspicion rather than a test that shows up to say, first time, here you go. That's another fascinating story. Francisco relates a little bit as well, that there's some controversy around it, but Aloise Alzheimer, who essentially diagnosed the first patient, this woman, I think she was diagnosed maybe in her 50s. And there's some question as to whether she had one of those deterministic genes. And that's essentially how we've been looking at this disease from that standpoint. Have you been reading my book, Bob? <laughs> <laughs> I've been peeking. I've been peeking a little bit. Yeah. Just just a little. Yeah. Here and there. Yeah, I couldn't help myself. Yeah. yeah, no, that's exactly right. Is It could be a real tragic case of medical history that our entire understanding of a disease, which is predicated on an incident case, has nothing to do with 99% of the diseases that people actually get. I agree with Francisco on that. that that's my reading of that literature also. The punchline when it comes to Alzheimer's disease is we get pretty darn good information from the blood. We get the relevant genes, we get all the vascular stuff, we get all the metabolic stuff, kind of Mickey Mouse on the inflammatory stuff, kind of Mickey Mouse on what toxins to look for, because truthfully, we just don't know. But overall, we get a pretty darn good way to handicap someone's risk of Alzheimer's disease. <laughs>